Hello and welcome. Today we are in gorgeous Shenzhen to bring you a review of an exciting new Chinese electric sedan that's going to be hitting markets around the world very soon, the BYD Seal. Let's get started. Here in China, the seal ranges in price from 31,000 to 42,500 US dollars at current exchange rates. Its biggest rivals, the Xpeng P7 and the Tesla Model 3, start at 33,000 and 38,000 US dollars respectively. The designs coming out of the Chinese electric sedan segment are some of the most interesting and best looking available today, but the BYD seal still manages to stand out from the crowd. It's compact, athletic, and covered in interesting details that reference its ocean theme. From the ripple pattern on the front fascia to the water droplets on the C-pillar and taillights. Those who simply call it a copy of the Model 3 are either visually impaired or Tesla shareholders. But while the exterior design splashes just enough details to keep you interested, the interior is more of a torrent of different colors, patterns, and styles. If you could say that the interior designers behind the Tesla Model 3 work only four days a week, I would say that the interior designers over at BYD, well, they must work, what, seven, maybe even eight. But if you can handle the design, you will be rewarded with an interior that generally feels premium and well put together. The seats on long range and performance models are trimmed in real leather, and all but the cheapest version have a heated and cooled front row, though they lack the heated rear seats of the Model 3. The BYD Seal has a wheelbase of 2.92 meters, giving it a very decent amount of rear leg room. Headspace is also pretty good thanks to this large overhead glass. One thing that is definitely better in this car versus the Xpeng P7 or the Tesla Model 3 is the angle of the rear seats. They're much less upright than those cars, meaning they're much more comfortable for driving in long distances. The SEAL uses BYD's latest EV architecture called ePlatform 3.0. However, unlike other ePlatform vehicles like the BYD Yuan Plus and the Dolphin, it has cell-to-body technology. What that means is that the battery pack itself is actually integrated into the structure of the car. The goal of this is to increase rigidity and decrease weight. Sandwiched into that structure is one of two lithium iron phosphate battery packs. Standard range cars use a 61.4 kilowatt hour pack delivering 550 kilometers of CLTC range, while long range models utilize an 82.5 kilowatt hour unit to go up to 700 kilometers. Performance versions use that same pack but have a slightly shorter range of 650 kilometers. Standard and long range versions of the SEAL use a single rear mounted motor, with the former pumping out a very modest 150 kilowatts and the latter pushing a more respectable 230 kilowatts. Spring for the performance version and you've got dual motors making a mighty 390 kilowatts and 670 newton meters of torque. That entry level car takes 7.5 seconds to reach 100 kilometers per hour. Thankfully, we're not in the entry level car. The performance version does it in just 3.8 seconds. Unfortunately, we're not in the performance car either. This is a long range version, which does it in a very reasonable, if not particularly thrilling, 5.9 seconds. Still, at around 37,000 US dollars, I suspect this is going to be among the best selling trims. It's also just 1,000 US dollars less than the starting price of a standard range Model 3. It would seem BYD isn't just going to rely on a cheaper price to attract buyers. Today's journey begins with a long section of highway, so let's talk a bit about this car's performance in that environment, starting with its driver assistance systems. This car has D-Pilot, which is obviously BYD's name for their level two semi-autonomous or rather driver assistance system. BYD's driver assistance has never really been their strong suit. It's not a selling point for this brand. It certainly doesn't measure up to the likes of uh, Xpeng, Neo, or Tesla. If you just go ahead and drive the car on your own, however, it's a very comfortable vehicle, especially here on the highway. NVH is kept well under control, whether it's tire noise or wind noise or the sound of the electric motors. I would say it's better than that of a Model 3. Ride comfort is also impressively well done. This is a multi-link front and rear suspension. 
So you would expect it to be comfortable and it is. It soaks up bumps, whether you're on the highway like this or you're on surface roads very well and you feel pretty isolated from the road itself. It's again, a comfortable commuter car for sure. One thing I have learned driving this car today is that whether you're in a mountain road like this or you're even in traffic, stick with sport mode. It has much better throttle response and the steering has a much more heft to it. It feels much more like a performance car when you're driving it like that. When you're in comfort mode or well, normal as they say, or eco, it kind of just turns into any other electric car and I don't like that. Something else you want to know is how does it actually handle? And there's good news in that department for sure, starting with the fact that it has some of the best steering feedback, steering feel that I've ever felt in an electric vehicle. Uh, things like the um, Xpeng P7 and uh, other electric sedans that I've driven, including some that are more performance oriented, really don't have a lot of steering feedback. You really just don't know what's going on with the front wheels, but that's not true with the, uh, with the BYD seal. It feels quite engaging to drive. The good news keeps coming too, because this thing feels pretty solid and planted through the corners in this kind of mountain road that we're on right now. It's pretty confidence inspiring. I know that this thing isn't exactly gonna be tail happy. It's got a pretty uh, aggressive uh, ESP or electronic stability programming system. I, I know that from, from driving it previously, but it's enough that you can feel comfortable pushing it into corners. And again, with the amount of steering feedback that you get, you feel confident that you know where the car is going at the same time. It's actually quite fun to drive. The BYD seal will be available for sale in countries like Australia, as well as regions like Southeast Asia and Europe. When exactly? I couldn't really tell you. What I do know is that this was a very important car for BYD. It needed to be good, it had to be good. And the good news is, it really is.